Yo, what's up guys? Today we're ranking the top 10 wide receivers in this draft. Let's get straight into it. All right, first at number 10, I got Christian Watson out of North Dakota State. He's 6'4", 211, ran a 4'3", 640. He's very versatile. You can play him on the outside and inside, even in the slot. He's even took a snap to a running back. He has a great burst. You can you can see this when he uh, just gets off the line. He makes he makes his move in that burst. He goes to zero to 100 real quick, and that was that's what helps him on his uh, deep routes. I say most of his uh, routes are deep routes, so those deep routes he needs that burst, and he's got that burst. And also he's great at the catch. It's surprising how big he is and how many people he makes miss, because this man is a really elusive uh, wide receiver. I haven't seen a lot of people do this. He's six four and making these corners missed so i think that's a plus for him too some uh some negatives for him he did have like 16 drops in his whole college career but i think he you can clean that up next negative i think he uh he also is like a very he has a very limited uh route tree he's only ran like really deep routes and uh crossers i would like to i would love to see him like run some more routes and uh do some more stuff with, with his route tree before he goes to the nfl and my uh, draft comp for this man is uh chase claypool he has the like the size and the speed to be like a chase claypool he just needs to put it all together and i'm not saying chase claypool is a, a good wide like a great wide receiver he's just a wide receiver with a great physical traits christian watson would be my number 10 wide receiver at number nine i got john metzi out of alabama this man would have been higher up if he didn't have injuries. He has a lot of injuries, like the ACL injury this year. It just put him down. I think he's still a great wide receiver, but he just has to go down because it's knee injuries. He is he is six foot one ninety five. His forty time that I saw was a four three six. And some of the pluses for him is uh his route running is amazing. I saw what he did to uh, Kira Leon. I hope I said that right. The, the Florida cornerback. He totally to toasted this man in a in a one on one situation. This man in a one on one situation, he's always gonna have the amazing cuts with his route running. It's hard to hard to guard this man one on one in a uh, man coverage. Next plus, he has a good release. He almost never gets jammed at the line. He has like the moves. He knows where to place his arms, get off the corners. I've never seen this man really uh, get jammed up in the line. All right, then the last plus is uh he's a great after the catch. Just like Christian Watson, he knows how to make people miss. He knows. He has that burner speed to get to the open field and to the sideline and uh, make the plays down the field. So I think John Menchie could be something if he uh, gets back to his like regular self because those injuries are not, not what I want to see from uh, my star wide receiver that I'm going to draft in the second round. But also these negatives are kind of glaring because you got the ACL injury. You can't really look over that because how is he going to be after he gets back from the ACL injury? No one knows. A lot of, some people come back like 100%, some people come back like maybe like 50%. So you never know with uh, ACL injuries, but he, he's gonna be like a a mid second round pick. That's what I would take for him, a mid second round pick. Also, he, he really has a slight frame. I think he needs to bulk up in the NFL to be something. You go, you, you could say like he's he could be like Devontae Smith, but I think if you're, if a corner is pressing him, like an NFL corner, I don't think he can get past an NFL corner if, he's, if an NFL corner is just pressing him. He's not, he doesn't have that strength to get up past them. He needs to bulk up before he goes to the NFL. And yeah, John Metz should be a best wide receiver at number nine. All right, at number eight, I got Jahan Dotson. Jahan Dotson out of Penn State is 5'11", 184. His 40 time was a 4'4", 3. But the, some of the pluses for Jahan Dotson is he has elite hands. I've seen this man make some crazy catches. There was one catch he made, like he was like one-handed. He got it. I forgot who that was against, but he made like a one-handed catch against a, a team. It kind of looks like Odell's catch, but he makes the uh, impossible catches look possible. But not only that, he has elite speed. That's another plus for him. That track star speed added with that route running he has, it's a great combination to have. I think Jahan Dawson could be like a Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith, they both have like the same like build frame, same almost the same height, and they look kind of the same running routes. Another plus is he, uh, he is very a very versatile player who's played like the X, played the Y, he played the Z. He's also played in the backfield sometimes. You can't, yeah, you can't really define this man one place where he should play. He's very, he could play like really anywhere with speed and um, great route running ability. But some uh, some negatives about uh, Jahan Dotson, he's, he does also have a slight frame. I would also like to see him like get a little bit bigger, but that's like a, a thing that the NFL players, the college players always have to get bigger. So it's not really that negative for him, but I'm, you always gotta put like a negative for them. He also has like a small catch radius. It's hard to, I would see, his arms are not that as long as uh, some, some of these other wide receivers. That's why I ranked him lower. So he, he would probably probably be best in the slot, or 
You could play him outside, but I think he'd be best in the slot or as like a, like a, a Debo Samuel role or he plays like running back in the like wide receiver. But I think Jahan Dotson would be a base amazing pick right here. Not, um, not amazing pick. But Jahan Dotson would be a, the best number eight wide receiver I have. All right, number seven, I got George Pickens out of Georgia. He's 6'3", 200. He ran a 447. This man's pluses are sorry, he does have a good size. He Pickens can be like a traditional X wide receiver on any team. Another plus, he's strong. He's hard to bring down in open field. This man will bulldoze you if you get in his way. He he will bulldoze anybody that gets in his way. So you love to see that. And also, he's a great run blocker because that strength helps with run blocking. And I think I think that that's great for a wide receiver because wide receiver you don't love you don't see them always want to run block, but he doesn't shy away from run blocking. And I think that's also a plus for him. And uh, the last plus, I think, and with that size, you can see that he's an amazing red zone threat. Just throw, this, throw the ball up to him, and he makes mostly all catches. He makes any contested catches of the red zone. So his draft combo, I think he was uh, like an A.J. Green. Because A.J. Green in his prime, he was a good red zone threat. He was good jump ball wide receiver. He's, Andy Dalton threw her up to him. He always uh, found a way to bring down the ball. And I think that's what George Pickens can be in the NFL if he uh, comes back from that ACL injury. And that's a negative for him. It's, it, he tore his ACL last year. And uh, like I said for uh, John Mechie, you don't know if they're going to come back to like 100% or like 50% of themselves. So that's a negative. Also another negative for him, I think he doesn't have that like breakaway speed that like most most wide receivers have. But his physical traits is what he uh, gets open with. He uses his like, he uses like his size and uh, his body to get, get open. But if he, he had that breakaway speed, and I think his ACL, the ACL injury is not going to help him at all because the ACL injury is going to probably hurt, hurt his speed now. I think he'd still be a great wide receiver in the league, but I think he'll uh, not be like one of the potential starters. I think he's going to be like a third a third day pick, like a third round pick maybe. Early third round pick or a, like a mid third round pick for him. But yeah, George Pickens would be my number one seven wide receiver. All right, my number six wide receiver would be Sky Moore. The wide receiver out of South Dakota State. He's 5'10", 195. He ran a 4-4-1-40, so that's, he's really speedy, so that's a plus, but also, he has great footwork. He can, um, this man changes his directions on a dime. He always, it always looks like he's, like, gonna go one way, but he's, like, changes it so fast. And I think that footwork can translate awesome to the NFL game. He could be a great slot wide receiver, great route running. He's also very strong. If you're just trying to, like, like hand tackle him, he's gonna break away, break away all those tackles, because this man has great upper body strength. He doesn't go down from the first tackle. Another another uh, plus is uh, he has great hands. You can always rely on him to catch the ball. He doesn't drop many passes that I've seen uh, from South Dakota State. He just makes the uh, the the necessary catches and uh, goes off running. But also the negatives. He's very he's, he's kind of undersized at 5'10", 195. He probably need a bulk up. But also De he looks like kind of like Deontay Johnson. But and Deontay Johnson is not really that big and bulky, so he might not need to bulk up. If he plays like the Deontay Johnson role, but if he's gonna play in the slot and he uses like he mainly uses his upper body strength to get like past people, I think bulking up would be a best thing to do for uh Sky Moore right here. Alright, another negative, he didn't really run that many routes to South Dakota State. It was mainly like deep routes and like slant routes. I think he would you need a more more variety of routes with him. So that can be fixed because uh he's gonna be a learning wide i meant wide, like routes from the wide receivers on the team and the coach you can really fix you can really fix the uh, like limited route um routes so yeah sky more i think would be a late second round pick or to like a mid even like a mid second round pick for uh sky more it just depends what team wants like a slot wide receiver that looks good like him all right my number five wide receiver would be jameson williams out of alabama he's 6'2 189 it's 40 time that I saw like from like past years was like a 425, but it might be like might be slower than that now because he tore his ACL. But some pluses for uh, um, Williams is like he's an excellent athlete. He's got that game breaking speed. You can see that on any like uh, clips you see, he's burning mostly everybody on the field. There's like barely anybody that can keep up with him in uh, like a one on one situation. He's also a great route runner who uh, creates space just like. 
everywhere. He creates space like running a slant route. I, I haven't seen, well, we haven't seen him since like last year, but he creates space like on mostly every route. This man's routes are amazing. His cuts are amazing. His routes are amazing. You can't really like deduct that from his uh, grade. Another plus is his yards at the catch. He, uh, this man knows how to make people miss. Since that he has like that blazing speed, he knows he'd be making people miss in open field. So it's hard to catch a man that's like, has like that 42540 in the open field because he can like do one move and he's already out because he one person missed. He's already like to the end zone. If you're drafted for upside, Jameson Williams has the best, the best like ceiling. He's like a ceiling is so high, but his floor is so low because he has that torn ACL. He could be like uh, like one of the like top 10 wide receivers in the league, or he can be like out of the league player. Not even an out of the league player. Maybe maybe like a uh, like a good backup player. So I'm I'm thinking someone is gonna take a like a, a risk on him because his negatives are not that bad. He just needs to bulk up and try to try to recover from that ACL injury. I did I did see him training a week ago for the first time in a while because uh and that's crazy because this man. I don't think he's fully healed from his uh, injury, but he's like just ready to get back. This man is a grinder, and I think he's gonna be an amazing player in this league if he gets back to like that uh that blazing speed he had in uh, college. So Jameson Williams would be my number five wide receiver in this in this draft, and I think he'll be a, like a late first rounder to even like a mid first rounder. You never know with these drafts because they're always like the NFL draft is always super random, and you can never uh, like never really predict what's gonna happen my number four wide receiver would be Traylon Burks at Arkansas he is 6'3 he's 225 that's a big man he ran a 455 which is kind of disappointing because I thought he was gonna run like a 44 he looks faster in um, college but I guess not because uh the, the combine he ran like a 455 which is kind of disappointing but some of the pluses for him He's got great size and speed. He kind of he kind of reminds me of like a Debo Samuel. Samuel. He looks like a big running back, who's also a great route runner. Take that as you will, but uh, he's just so big and so gifted as a route runner. Another plus for him, like I said, he's a really big player who uses his like physical physical traits to get open. This man's always one of the tallest players on the field. Who you if you don't like guard him, like double team him. He's always gonna win those 50-50 balls against like a smaller corner. The last plus I got from him, he's a great runner up to catch player. Like I said, he looks like a running back and he like runs like a running back. This man is plowing through players. He doesn't go down after the first tackle. He also has that very elusive like style to his game where he uh he can make people miss and he's not the fastest player, but he can uh can burn if people if you're not careful. But some negatives for Traylon Burks, he his route tree is really limited, like some of the other players but that can be fixed he didn't run that many routes at a uh, at a uh, arkansas he was mainly like a i guess like a screen player also they put him on some deep routes but i haven't seen that many routes on him that routes that he uh, ran in, in um college he did have a drop problem at arkansas but that can, that can be totally be fixed he just needs to look the ball in before he uh runs he, uh, some of the drops i've seen he just didn't look the ball in he just like looks to run before he uh before he catch the ball in my book he'd be a late second round pick no a late first round pick i meant late first round late first round pick but i've seen people also put him like get him to the browns at like number 13. i'm pretty sure it's number 13 they're at in the draft wherever the browns are wherever the browns are i always seen also seen them take uh trail on Burks. so i i would say he's good he's gonna be like a, either a mid-round pick mid first round pick or a late first round pick but i'm more leaning toward the late first round pick because the people in front of him i just think they're way better not way better but like a little bit better than um a little bit better than on uh, traylon burks is right now and i think that four five five will uh it's kind of disappointing to be to be honest but he's still a great wide receiver don't get me wrong so traylon burks at number four are right, my third wide receiver and he had a he had a huge jump i think this man had a big jump from his uh from his uh combine this combine was amazing it's chris olave from ohio state the wide receiver at ohio state he is 6'1 he's 189 his 40 time was a 439 but he was 
The first one it was like a 4-2, but the uh, official time was a 4-3-9. Still amazing because he's one of the fastest wide receivers that is in this draft. Some of the pluses I got, he's got a great hands where you can rely on this man to catch any ball that you throw to him. He doesn't really miss that many uh, passes. You throw to him, he's, he's always going to catch it. Like mostly always going to catch it. This man doesn't drop passes that much. Another plus, he's a great athlete. He ran track in um, he ran track in uh, college. He had a uh, his hundred meter dash uh, time was a uh, 10, 10.8 seconds, I think. Yeah, it was 10.8 seconds. That speed that he got from track can translate amazing, the amazing in the uh, NFL. Like these Ohio State wide receivers tra games are translating into their their game translates a lot to the NFL. And I think Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave will be two amazing wide receivers in this draft. It's just who's number one. I think you'll just have to figure out. But but another thing, that another plus for him is he's a great route runner. He gets a lot of separations with his routes. He just makes makes people look silly with it, uh, like guarding him. Because sometimes I just see this man get a route and he's like just straight open in the middle of the field. If he like, let me let me explain. Let me explain. That didn't sound right. He like makes one cut and he's like. The, wide, the corner's already like 10 yards behind Chris Olave. Chris Olave, he's just a burner and he's a separ the separation with his routes makes him, I would think, like a, he could be like a top 10 pick in this draft. But some of the, the negatives, which is not really a lot because he's one of my top three wide receivers and there's not really the, to like diss on him for uh, Chris Olave. He does need to bulk up. 189 is not going to really be good at 6 1. But I said this for every wide receiver because the college, college is not like the NFL. So you gotta like, you gotta get bigger, you gotta get stronger. But I still think he'll be a great wide receiver in this league. Another negative, he doesn't have a lot of moves to get like yards after the catch. He does have that blazing speed, but he doesn't know how to like make people miss. If it's not like burning them down the field, he doesn't know how to make people miss. So I would love to see him get some like elusive moves that like helps him get some even more it makes him even more dangerous in the open field with that blazing speed. But other than that, Chris Olave is a great wide receiver and I think he could be a wide receiver one for like most teams in this NFL, most teams in the NFL that need a wide receiver. So Chris Olave would be my number three wide receiver. All right, my second pick is Drake London from USC. He's 6'5", 210, he ran a 4'5", he's really elusive. He, he, makes, he knows how to make people miss um, in the open field. He's great after the contact. You, you can't like like I said for a bench other people. Um, you can't just like weekly wrap him up. You gotta you gotta actually wrap this man up. There's there's no weak wrap up with this man. You gotta you gotta actually hold him up, hold him down. And there's maybe even two or three people have to come and get him. And that goes to the next the next plus uh, his physicality. He's one of the toughest players in this draft. I would say this man is the best run blocking wide receiver in this draft. He's not afraid to block. I love those wide receivers that are not afraid to uh, get their hands dirty and block. He's uh, He's got that toughness that you want for a team. And I think he could be one of those star wide receivers in like three years, maybe two to three years. And I, I think he could be a number one wide receiver on this uh, any team that uh, needs a wide receiver. The last plus I got for the uh, for Drake London is uh, his, he's got a full route tree. He knows how to run all routes. He doesn't have a limited route tree. You see with these like bigger wide receivers, they only know how to run like nine routes or crossing routes. But to him, he he runs the full um route tree. You can't you can't uh, take away from him that he has not doesn't have like a full route tree to run with. It's great for a team that's like trying trying to win right now because you like you don't have to develop him. He's like he can come in and straight come in like right away and like play. And I think that's like what only mainly teams want. Teams just want a, team, a wide receiver that can run routes, be physical, and it's like he can get open. Just that that's what uh, Drake London is, and I, that's why I think he's number two. All right, the negatives he did break his ankle last year, which could hurt him. I don't think it's gonna hurt him at all, but he did break his ankle. That's that's a negative. Also, he doesn't really have that blazing speed on him, but what he doesn't have in um like speed, he has in, he makes up in like physical like strength and uh his size so i don't think speed would be a negative for him because he's not really that like burners type speed player he just wants he's, he's like one of those like juju or uh, brandon marshall wide receivers like the ones that are like tough and like try to run you over not the one that's like not like a like a tyree kill i don't think i don't think he, uh he'll be like that but 
I think uh, Drake London is like the number two wide receiver in this draft. That's why I chose him here. All right, the number one wide receiver is gonna be uh, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson from Ohio, Ohio State. He's six foot one eighty eight. He ran a four three eight. That's speed. He's got the speed on him. All right, his uh, pluses are he's got some. He's great at route running. This man has a lot of talent at, as a route runner. He like his cuts are amazing. I don't know why he's not number one wide receiver for everybody else but his route running is one of the best i've seen in a while yeah one of the best i've seen in a while he creates a lot of space in the open field all right next place he's very elusive um he just knows how to make people miss in open field with that 438 speed that man knows how to like how to uh get you out the way there's no way you can catch this man in open field he's just too much of a burner man i don't even know how our people ha don't have this man higher up because every time I see the see the, like these projections, he's like always like member like maybe like four or five. I would say he's number one because this man has the looseness, has the speed. He's got good hands too. Because um, I've never seen Garrett Wilson really drop a pass unless it's like overthrown or something like that. And he just has that that like game that like translates to the NFL, like NFL a lot. You could translate this game into like a any system you want. He's a very like scheme versatile uh, player, and I think anybody who uh who get picks him up will have like elite wide receiver for years to come. The negatives here, like I said, for a lot of wide receivers, he does need a bulk up. At six foot 188, he's kind of small for uh the NFL, but I'm not worried about that. A lot of a lot of wide receivers bulk up after a year. Another another uh, negative, I think he he has some concentration lapses where he uh forgets to look the ball in, which leads to drops because he's so eager to get the ball and like. Uh, start making moves, but he like forgets to look look the ball, and he like always looks to run first. I'm saying. So if he, he that's also an easy fix because he just work on his discipline to look the ball in before he uh, he makes starts running. So I think Garrett Wilson has the best chance to make a team to a, like a different like a difference maker because he could be a top five. He will be. I say he will be a top five wide receiver in two to three years. This man has yeah the physical traits to be a elite wide receiver in his league. Actually, all of these three wide receivers in the top row, I say, will be at least a, like a top 15 wide receiver in this league. Mark my words, the, all these three wide receivers that um, I named in the top three will be top 15 wide receivers in the league. But other than that, that's it for the video. Have a good day and peace.